In that last song, I'm saying this word religion. And there was a friend of mine who was speaking the word in its radical sense from the root of the meaning of it. Uh, like in that word, there's the same root as where we get the word ligament. Um, and so the way he was speaking it, he was talking about reconnecting, rejoining, uh, as opposed to being dismembered. It was about being remembered. And it was uh, a, a way of saying the word that I had never even thought of. Because to me, obviously, the word means where we're fractured, where we're broken, where we're taken apart, where we're fighting each other. And so part of what I want to sing about and part of what I come to this guitar for is I want it to teach me about this joy that I've felt in my life and the times when I get the goosebumps that make me feel so alive and I feel grateful and I feel like, okay, this is what it is to know that I have a beating heart, that I have this chance to be alive and bring what I've been given and bring all that's come through from <coughs> my folks and their folks and kind of continue the story in a way that makes sense, to be connected, to be reunited, to re... all of my ideas about that starting out felt really strangely my own, radical. Because my parents blessed us with this great way of growing up with absolutely no tradition at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. They both come from pretty strict traditions. And they just decided it stops here. We're not passing any of this ridiculous nonsense on to another generation. So I had feelings that I had no language for. And the feelings were really obvious. And the experimentation that I would do with following those hunches, those feelings, what I used to call my mysterious traveling companion. I had no language for it, and so I was completely free to imagine that this was some wonderful exploration into a, a whole other realm that maybe nobody else had stumbled across. It just felt to me like it was brand new. And I'm so grateful that it had that feeling of adventure to it feeling of playfulness, that's the thing. It was not sort of like the cop god, you know, it was not like the, the vengeful, you know, sort of disciplinarian god. It was this playful force in the universe that had this beautiful notion of, oh, you think that's the world? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, I would go, what, what? And uh, this playful force would say, how much do you want to know? <laughs> and I would go, well, how much can I stand? And I, I would get this feeling like, well, it depends. Like, how blown apart do you want to be? Do you want to be able to function in the world? You could, you could be just a little bit aware of how much solid matter is not solid matter. You could be a little bit aware of how much the confines of who you think you are is not who you think you are. Imagine how it must be for a single cell in your body to finally figure out that it's part of a bigger organism because that one cell has no way of seeing or knowing what a human being would be. When my wife Nance broke her femur mountain biking, she broke it in five places. It was scary. I was terrified seeing that first x-ray of this femur, this leg that she used to run on, suddenly broken all apart. And I was even more upset when I saw the second x-ray after the surgery, because there was the big titanium bar and the 
14 big screws. You could tell power tools were involved. <laughs> <laughs> and I was frightened because when I looked at that second x-ray, I saw that there was a piece of bone that had broken sort of in a triangle like this, and it was set wrong. It just, the, the screw didn't snug it down right, and it was turned a little. And I said to the orthopedic surgeon, what about this? Look, there's this shard of bone sticking out into where the muscle is. That's, that's got to be bad, right? <laughs> he said, this will fine. She'll be, she'll be good as new. Don't worry. I said, well, it's going to tear. I mean, that bone's sticking right out into the muscle, right? He said, you'll see. By the time she comes back for the next checkup to get another x-ray, you'll see that that little shard of bone will already be shrinking down. It'll, it'll just melt away. I said, melt away? It's bone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's living tissue. It's, it's bone, but it's still alive. And, you know, you'll see it'll, it'll already be getting smaller by the next checkup just a few weeks away. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, well, how, how, does, how does it know? <laughs> he said, well, it's weight bearing. And if there's a part of bone that isn't weight-bearing, it just naturally atrophies. Okay. But wait a second. Look, on the other side of the same piece of bone, there's a gap. What about this? How is it ever going to like glue together? He said, well, we're not gluing them together. They're yeah. growing together. I said, yeah, but how's it going to grow if it's not even touching? He said, don't worry. I do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We went home, Nance was healing, doing everything right. We come back for the next checkup. It was awkward, but she manages with some wincing to get up on the x-ray table again and take another x-ray and we're looking. And here's the three x-rays, you know, the injury the, right after the operation and now today's x-ray. Wow, that little shard of bone is shorter by a lot. <laughs> How is that possible? Look at that, it's just melting away. <laughs> but, uh-oh, no, the gap is the same. The gap on the other side, it's, it's not changing. Oh, no. He said, no, this is better than I expected. She's got more bone growth than I would have expected. Look at this, it's, it's, I said, it's the same distance. It's not growing together. He said, do you see how in this recent x-ray, the gap is all cloudy? And in the first x-ray right after the surgery, the gap is just really dark in there? I said, yeah. Well, this cloudy is all individual bone cells growing all throughout that gap. And eventually there's enough of them they can sort of find each other and link up and it all becomes bone. I said, how do they know? <laughs> he said, well. We've been doing this for years, and I said, no, 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 now how do the surgeons know? How do the bone cells know? Because, you know, on the scale of a single cell, that much distance is like a mile down the road. How do they know they're even supposed to be there? He said, well, it's weight-bearing, and whatever. I said, wait a minute, I've been thinking about this weight-bearing thing. And you know, and I know, that she's not put an ounce of weight on this leg. And he said, well, we, um, okay, we don't really know. <laughs> we don't know? <laughs> well, there are some, there are some theories that, uh, no, we don't really know. <laughs> don't you think you should find out? <laughs> I mean, I... I don't have a medical license, but I have poetic license. I could <laughs> go in there and talk to the bone cells.